if you were a gym leader, which type would you specialize in? Extreme weather Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> What is up, everybody? I'm Real Breaking Nay, a Pokemon content creator on YouTube. But today, I have the important task and job to uh, introduce and to interview some fantastic people from the world of Pokemon. Uh, of course, you all know we celebrated the 25th anniversary last year, going into the 26th anniversary this year. Let's get started. Let's bring some people to the virtual stage. First up, we got none other then Erica Schroeder. Hello, everybody. Hey, Erica, how you doing? I'm well, and you? I'm doing great. I love your setup there. It looks Thank cozy. Thank you. I got a little bit of DMG up here. That's a non sequitur having nothing to do with Pokemon. <laughs> and if I go like this, you can see a family of Pokemon behind me. In the background. I got the entire family. So I'll do family. this every few minutes. I'll go like this. Just so you can all see. <laughs> and you got the, the beautiful <laughs> Sylveon there as well. So. Oh, you saw Sylveon. You yeah, it's it. my favorite Evolution. You kidding me? Oh, that's yeah. right. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome. <laughs> I'm glad that you could be here. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce the next person. We got Lisa Ortiz. Hello. Hey, Hi. Lisa. How's it going? Doing Hi. great. Good. You you look comfortable over there. I am. I'm on my sofa, flanked by my kitties that you can't see, Aww. chilling out. So with my, well, good, with good. my lint and my ashawat, I'm doing it. <laughs> Stay comfortable. Stay comfortable. Um, and then last but not least, we have Sarah Natachini. Uh, and and there's Sarah. Hey. What's up? Hey, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. What's up? Oh, you you're breaking up just a little bit, but you're there now. You're there now. You're good. Oh, it was good earlier. Yeah, I know. I You know, internet, internet. technology, oh. things like that, oh. right? Oh, right. Well. Your your well, background is very uh, open. It's open. It's an open space. Yeah. Yeah. I love what you've done with the place. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my place. It's not my place. I'm borrowing a place. <laughs> Do you just walk into a random house and start? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. what I assume. <laughs> just there, huh? I'm a mess. Catch it. Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> This one no, this looks nice. This will do. <laughs> well, thank you all for being here. Of course, last year we celebrated the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. Mm -hmm. This year, it what we're less than a month away from going into the 26th anniversary of Pokemon, which is absolutely wild to even think about. I still feel like we're celebrating the 25th anniversary, but mm -hmm. um, let's talk about real quick new episodes of Pokemon Master Journeys. Yes. Now went up on Netflix. Are you guys uh, are you, are you guys loving this series more than any past series that you've got to participate in? I will say I'm gonna jump in here first because I've been on the show in some version pretty much since uh, since the beginning seasons going on. This is my favorite. <laughs> I love. I am getting to see things that I am very excited about. There are people coming back who we haven't seen in a long time. Is people I don't want to spoil the drop that just happened for people. Um, there's you've got. I've got Sarah sort of like meeting all these other these other trainers that have come out and she remembers all her moves. She remembers <laughs> how to do all the different kinds of moves. That makes me really happy. <laughs> Again, a little smarter bit of smarter. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, his memory is getting better. It's yeah. a fun reunion, I'd say, you know. Mm -hmm. It's really neat to to, you know, I I guess I've been with the show now 20 years. So it's uh it's cool to see us mm -hmm. visit some uh, Old, yeah. old faces mm -hmm. and, uh, and the actors that come with that it's exciting to like be like oh my gosh remember when mm -hmm. and, um, look it, at that cat tail yeah sorry <laughs> I, my cat is excited also <laughs> yeah and it's been what's been really what's been a real great gift is like what she was saying is that we were able to get a lot of people back who have been not been there for a while but have like, have mm -hmm. been from past seasons we've been able mm -hmm. to get the original actors back which has been a lot of fun I think the, the the fans really love it in the aspect of that you do get to revisit a lot of uh, familiar faces and, you know, they're hopping around to a bunch of different, you know, uh, regions as well, which is something we haven't really seen a whole lot in past seasons of Pokemon. So um, I, I hope that's kind of something that continues moving forward 
with the anime because I, I I think it's nice to see all of that. So obviously we can't say anything, but you know. But we can smile. Right? You can smile. <laughs> that might be the only smile we get from Sarah the entire time. Right? <laughs> 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 um, well, let's go ahead and uh, jump into some uh, fan questions. We got a bunch of them, so I want to try to get to uh, as many as possible. Uh, first up, we got Brandon. How has voice acting changed over the years? Are there things you would change if you could? Whoever wants to answer first. Um, well, I'll answer that specifically to Pokemon. And, and Lisa and, and Sarah, you guys can chime in on this too, but... <clears throat> When the show first started, well, they called it Pokemon and not Pokemon. And um, so that changed. And then the Pokemon were less connected to their emotions, I would say. And there was more about keeping in line with the Japanese and the inflection and less about the emotional life within the Pokemon. So that evolved and that started evolving, I don't know, around when, do you think, Lisa? Um, I think a lot of that, and I... We'll say we did not speak for the Pokemon company, so we're talking about our experiences yeah. here. But um, like it was when I started, a lot of people would pronounce it Pokemon or we would Pokemon. There wasn't a standardized thing. And I, I know that that definitely they started to standardize probably like maybe 10 years, 10 years ago. We started getting all that. We started really they, they didn't know it was going to last this long. So when they first had everything there, they, you know, people came in, they they were watching it and they didn't they. They were doing what they were what they were doing with it. My cat is attacking me underneath here, so I apologize, all of you. It is right here, and every time I move my hand, it like lifts its head up to do that. So if I seem distracted, it's a cat. Um, but yeah, no, no, they did. They they started they started really really standardizing and really really looking at that. I think um, a lot of times when we moved to Duart, and probably about maybe like maybe like ten years ago. Sarah, when did you did you notice a change, or do you feel like it started standardizing when you came in? You know, because you've been doing this like yeah, forever yeah. as well. I've been doing it 15 years it, since I started. I mean, my performance has changed a little bit. I mostly hear from other people, but now that I like look back and I'm like, what are they talking about? <laughs> um, I notice it too. He's definitely gotten a lot more natural and more natural to me vocally. Just the vocal quality of it. Yeah. Um, has gotten more natural to me. Um, and I feel like the performance has also gotten a little bit snarkier and a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more me. And I think kind of more of the voiceover experience in general has gotten more naturalistic. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Um, authenticity and casting mm -hmm. is a big thing. So yeah. that's one of the major changes. And I think Pokemon took that journey part yeah. of Mm -hmm. around the same mm -hmm. time that everyone else was taking that same journey. Yeah, I like to say that I led the charge on that, but you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I do think that I, I will say like, I think it got more natural, um, lately, especially like you were saying, it's been, it's been over the course of time. So if you look at those earlier episodes, it is sort of a different style of coming in and even bringing some of the people back. Um, we were grounding them a little bit more in the new mm. world, in this world that we have, that is, mm. this uh, feels a little more real in there. And I will say, I think like, I think Sarah, I think that Ash kind of got that snarky edge that you had somewhere in X Y, because yes. he got he got a little bit seemed a little bit older for a little while and then he came back and I think that mm -hmm. that kind of he uh, he started creeping into new emotions that he hadn't had before like frustration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Open the floodgates for me though. Like those, those angst. Yes, yes, yeah. you got a little angsty. You got angsty. Yeah. <laughs> I like I snarky say, Ash. I, 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 say we, I say we keep snarky ash for sure. I remember I once getting that. direction from from you, Lisa, mm -hmm. and uh, we we sent it. Oh no, I, I think one of the producers was on the line with us, or even in the room with us before the mm -hmm. pandemic, and and they said, "There he is. There's our ash." And I was like, Aww. "Really? That's our ash? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> cute. That was a little bit Bart Simpson, but okay." <laughs> it evolved. Go has some good moments like that too. Every yeah. once in a while, yeah. Oh, well, great, question. great question, that. Brandon. Um, let's go ahead and get into the next question here. Uh, this is from Da. What would be your ultimate dream role, uh, be it voice acting or any other medium? Uh, I want to play Mama Rose on Broadway, but I think that'll only happen if I get really, really famous away from Broadway. And then they're like, okay, you'll sell tickets. That's my dream. It's 
the tough Mama one. Rose. Yeah, Mama Rose and Gypsy in the. In no, the, I know. I, no, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, and that's so cool, cool, Sarah. I love that. Yeah. Funny, funny story. Mom, I, I found musical theater and theater at the library. And so when I was in second grade, I was singing Mama Rose's Mama Rose's breakdown song in our talent oh show. At that's that amazing. Was, that was like I was like, this is the song that I like. <laughs> I wanted, I was like doing Martha's similarly, like an an older character that was I wasn't, you know, ready to go into. I remember doing Edward Albee's um Martha and hello, somebody help me. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Thank you. Yes. Um, I remember Second working on, on her monologue. <laughs> I was more of a honey, right? Which is the uh, other role. But um, I didn't want to be honey. I wanted mm -hmm. to be Martha. And that was like foreshadowing for my future career. I never wanted to be who I was. Yeah. Um, Cause I was like, I like me, I'm cool, whatever. It's good. But like, I'm interested in diving into someone else's brain, mm -hmm. you know? So See, I think in those older roles from from a young age. See, I think that's why I was like, you know, I was in junior high and like high school. I get to college and they were like, they were they didn't put me into honey. They put me into Martha. They were like, here, you can be Martha. You can be this. You can do that. And I think that's why I wanted to do animation, because I was like, I can be a child. <laughs> um, so awesome. do, you, do you have a role, Erica? You think um, I used to say Julie and Carousel just because the music, but mm -hmm. drama wise, eh, it doesn't do that much for me. Um, and also the songs of Maria and West Side Story, but those are not really dreams for me anymore. I would say like, I mean, my favorite thing to do is to create a role from the ground up. And I used to do mm -hmm. readings and workshops of musicals in New York all the time. And I miss that. So mm -hmm. I guess I want to create something new. Um, in terms of voiceover, oh, I would love to have a role on a recurring role on Scooby-Doo. Wow. <laughs> and I just really have always wanted that. Um, and I would also love to play Wonder Woman because who wouldn't? I don't who know. Would... Such an iconic role. Yeah. I think we would all love to mm -hmm. step into those shoes. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I had always dreamed of a She-Ra from when I was a kid. Yes! Mm -hmm. that, so seeing that, that series came out was amazing. Yeah. Um, but uh, the the stuff that I've, a lot of stuff that I've been watching besides stuff for younger kids that I really have enjoyed is um, uh, is like the Castlevania type stuff and like Dota and things like that. Like I've been watching that and it's really, really cool. That's so awesome. that's kind of kind of grounded stuff that I'm, I'm looking into now. Nice. Ooh, those mm -hmm. are all possibilities. You can all make them happen. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. What, uh, America. Erica, I was going to say, what about what about Wonder Woman making an appearance on Scooby Doo? That would be amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a fantastic idea. Let's make it happen. All right. I mean, yeah, cause, those cause, kids. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Random people are always making appearances on Scooby Doo. Like it's, it's possible. I can have yeah. two dreams in one. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's jump into the next question. Uh, this is from Carrie. What Pokemon region is your favorite? Oh, uh -oh. I, this is so hard because it's like it's picking not... a favorite child. But do you have you guys have? I do. Yeah, Alola is mine. That's, that's what I was. That's what I was thinking. It's paradise. Yeah. And there's mm -hmm. so diverse, and it's you know what what you, what you can do there. I like awesome. that. Yeah, we yeah. had our. I love that they were in school. Yeah. I love <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Learned. Learned. <laughs> Kukui Kukui was a good teacher. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but I also loved playing um Sandy, the Eevee, and that's where Sandy mm -hmm. came from. And so yeah. I just love those scenes they wrote. I love that they explored that was the beginning for me and from my perspective, but Lisa and mm -hmm. Sarah, you would know this way more than me because I mm -hmm. come in and I pepper the Pokemon throughout. Um, but it felt like this. There was more story and less battling. Am yeah. I making that up? Yeah. I mean, for there was a lot of battling, but I think there was a lot of character and a lot of family story. And you had a lot of like. I think everybody there. There were there. I think it was the largest traveling party that we had because they didn't yeah. travel. They kind of stayed in the same area. So I think you got to know them all a little bit more. More character yeah. development, right? And like moments to get to know the character under a microscope a little bit more is what it felt like to me, but I don't know what it felt like to you guys. 
I think, I mean, yeah, I think like other, other, other arcs and other regions have had that. It's just been in a different way. I just think that they were always, they were always active and traveling out. And I think everybody being in one spot, yeah, got them to really be able to, to explore their dynamics more. and with their family and with like, and, and with, um, I don't know. I loved the whole Kukui story. So yeah. that was a big thing for me. <clears throat> I also think the with the Alola region, it really opened up more of Pokemon in in terms of you know we were seeing the uh, Alolan versions of yes. certain Pokemon, you know Alolan Raichu and stuff like that, and so it really kind of opened up the the Pokemon world more and seeing that oh these Pokemon can be in other regions and have other forms, and of course now we're seeing it with Galar uh, mm -hmm. as well. So I think uh, Alola was definitely a big turning point for Pokemon in general and what mm -hmm. direction it could go in. So yeah. um, I would agree that Alola is a, a fantastic region. Uh, that was a good question, by the way. Uh, next one. This is from Alex. What were some of your favorite moments when you did the show? Within the show, yeah. Um, yeah. I have a couple. There's an episode, it's episode 1928. Remember that? Because it's my grandma's birth year. <laughs> mm -hmm. Episode 1928. I always forget what the title is, but um, it's an episode where so many things happened. Uh, mostly Ash rescued a Pokemon out of a tree. I need to, re I need to refer back to this a little bit because I've forgotten Aww. what happens now, but he rescues a Pokemon out of a tree. And there's another episode where a Pokemon passes away. And that's an incredibly um, dramatic, very sad moment. And yeah, those are my like, oh, oh, and the first episode of the Alola region um, where Ash gets to go on stage and, and perform. Ah, and Jesse gives the best performance. Michelle Knotts gave the best performance ever as Jesse in that episode. It's a very a cool play. Yeah, yeah, the school play of the second, yeah, second, second. Oh, season. awesome. Not the best, the best. Yeah, those are the ones that come to mind. I should review them. I um, remember a couple different episodes that come to mind. Amora and Aurorus. That episode mm -hmm. hit me emotionally <laughs> because the, like, mother daughter dynamic for lack of a better word mm -hmm. was when when team rocket took one and and i can't remember if it was i'm mixing them up amora and amoris one of them is here but um that hit me emotionally and like made me very i don't know and then um i love the introduction of tapu coco just loved mm -hmm. exploring that voice with lisa mm -hmm. and discovering that character and then some other favorite moments were um bianca um and running into ash and ash always like falling into a body of water <laughs> just so ditzy, but also lovable and fun and crazy she was and the scenes with her and the muscle pokemon have always baffled me <laughs> very <laughs> interesting cool. moments yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. but those are a couple of my favorites lisa um there there are so many it's hard um there's Obviously, the the Litten episode where where um, that one meant a lot to me when he lost when it lost its uh, its master over there, and um, that was beautiful. But there's my they change, um, and I like them sometimes for different reasons than other people. I I I like to follow a story arc to the end, so when you get your payoff, it's really fun. I loved the Kukui episodes. Um, uh, they're not even ones that I was I was necessarily in. Oh no no I was because I was fighting in the wrestling ring. So Litten fighting in the wrestling ring. Anything that had to do with Litten and wrestling and Kagui was amazing. But um, I don't want to do any spoilers. But when uh, when <laughs> when Kagui shows up to the wrestling ring with the masked royal and they both have to be in the same place at the same time, it was a comedy of errors that was great. And I was waiting this whole time because his poor wife, I'm like, just tell her who you are. This <laughs> this was because he had his secret identity. And so he was running back and forth. I love secret identity stuff like that. So that was one of my, <laughs> so he's like running, Kukui's up in the stands, but he has to wrestle. So he's running down the stairs and he has to come back and his wife is getting more and more annoyed. Burner, she's getting more annoyed and annoyed, so it's just very funny. Um, it's I love like that. It's like del Arte, a yeah. lot of that stuff, right? yeah, yeah. Well, that's 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 yeah. that's one of the things that I love, and one of the backgrounds that I that I try to bring to it is, is that, but uh, but yeah, so those are those are very good. There's a lot of really great episodes in, in this season, too, obviously, like people coming back, but there's um, 
it's actually one of the first season, one of the first episodes of Journeys. Uh, one of the things that I really liked is there's a scene with Ash and Go, and they're just talking about um, their different philosophies about uh, towards Pokemon. And um, it's the, the Bulbasaur episode in the beginning where they find the Bulbasaur and Ash is like, I'm going to go in and help it. And Go is like, you have to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, things like that sort of, they make me very, they, I, I think it's very cool. I love to follow the different characters on their journey. So that, yeah. yeah. But I, the wrestling I, one's got me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a wrestling fan? Is that why? Or is it just... I, not like I won't do that because I don't want people to throw rocks at me because I don't know all the things that are happening now. I used to watch when I was younger and I'll watch every once in a while, but I do. I love, I love the drama of it. So yes. So I watched glow? a bunch of stuff. What? You, oh, I was a glow? huge glow fan. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, that that show. Oh, oh glow. So yeah. When that was canceled, I was like, why? Mm -hmm. So yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm a wrestling fan as well, and I mm -hmm. always love the storyline of mm -hmm. everything, you know, and I don't, I, I like the wrestling, but it's the storyline, just all the drama that goes on with it. I, I absolutely love it, so I, I can relate to you on that. Um, and um, a little, just because I came from like old school, I used to watch when I came up, when we were making the voice for that with the voice actor who's who's Abe, who's amazing. Um, he had to make up the wrestling voice. So he came up with something else. And I was like, why don't you try something? And then I did my best translation of Rowdy Roddy Piper. And, <laughs> that, and so <laughs> he took that and ran. And that's how we got his voice. <laughs> you remember Superfly Snuka well, by any chance, any, Lisa? No, it's Superfly Snuka. Okay. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I liked him. I thought he was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, someone's saying, "Can we hear this Roddy Piper impression?" I can no longer. It, I can only do it with the lines because yeah. it was just like uh, it's probably gonna come into like so I, I I I don't even remember because I was like questions are good. I I can't do it. I can't do it right now. It was spontaneous and in the moment. Maybe at the end. At the end. All right, all right, maybe, maybe if, maybe. if everything goes as planned here, yeah. okay. I you gotta need, listen uh, to a ref first. I got <laughs> not a referee, let's, but a reference. Yeah, anyway. oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and jump into the next question. Uh, this is from Jean. Do you have a favorite voice actor that has given you inspiration? I have one. There are so many. I don't know yeah. if this is my favorite, but I I love Pat Carroll. Um, who was Ursula. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. also I found out years later when I was watching reruns of like, I bought the DVDs, all the Garfield, the old Garfield <laughs> to show my kids because I'm a Garfield fan. And um, we were watching Garfield's grandma and I was like, oh my God, that character has the most amazing laugh. Ha! Like it was just this really <laughs> vivacious and big, incredible laugh. And I was like, who is that? So I Googled it and lo and behold, it's freaking Pat Carroll again. So for oh, some reason, her voice and her performance and her acting does something to me here, 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 stomach, you know, just like, I love her. So she's one for me. Well, I mean, there are so many, uh, I'm mostly inspired by on-camera actors, especially on-camera actors who uh, came from voice acting, like Hank Azaria. Oh, he started yeah. voice yeah. acting and he built this wonderful career. Um, Chris Summers, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Who else? I mean, the, Kevin Klein is like one of my favorite actors, and he's Robin great. Williams, and Jim Carrey, and I mean, there are so there are so many. Yeah. There's no there's no one actor that I ever became yeah. like obsessed with, and like I've studied a lot of careers, but there's not like one person that I'm like, this is who I'm gonna be, because you know you plan, God laughs, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta kind of. Mm -hmm. You know, try to carve carve a niche out for yourself and and see where it takes you. I think um, it's there's like Sarah. There's so many people and there's so many regular actors who have inspired me. And there's so much of the animation that I grew up watching. So one of the um, two of the shows that I was a huge fan of when I was growing up are um, GI Joe and <laughs> Transformers. So I was a big, I used to watch them all the time. Um, and I was in love with uh, the voice of Starscream and who, and also Cobra Commander who 
I did find out that the same actor played both of them. Oh. And um, I believe that is Charlie Adler. And I got to take class with him and it mm -hmm. was really amazing. So that was my moment That's of kind cool. of geeking out because I was oh. like, I didn't say anything in class though. I didn't say anything. I was just like, this is, it's, it's very cool. And it's, I think that's also one of the things is that there are so many people who have been working for so long, like Steve Bloom and, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of people who are so wonderful. So it's sometimes it's mm -hmm. less about it. It's about the roles that you see. You'll see someone yeah. do something and then you're like, wow, that's really Whoa. amazing. Right. Yeah. Meeting yeah. Samantha <laughs> Newark was cool. Jam and the holograms. Oh and my me gosh. Meeting Samantha a couple years that. ago at a convention. I was like, wow, like I love you. <laughs> and she's like the sweetest person in the world, you know? She's yeah. So I've interviewed her before, before and she's very bright and bubbly. Like she, it's, it's almost like you're interviewing Jim. <laughs> it really is it really is so that's awesome um but yeah those are all those are all great inspirations like you said it's hard to pick one person because you take a little bit from everybody, everybody right yeah, yeah. And, and you kind yeah. of mix it all in a little bit of a pot and you know get your inspiration from that so mm -hmm. um and jim yes. carrey just had a birthday too right okay. jim carrey just you said jim yeah. carrey earlier so yeah jim carrey yeah, had a birthday did. Don't know any of the actors yes. well to know their birthdays. <laughs> I just saw it. I just saw it right It like pops like up in my feed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Harkening um, back to the Transformers comment, I just want to say the Transformers ride at Universal Studios is like one of my favorites. And it's because of the voiceover. Like it right. is so freaking good. The, the sound in that ride is what makes it. So everyone has got to Ooh. go. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Where is it? Where is the Transformers ride? Sorry. Universal, Universal, Universal in California, yeah. California. Okay. Yeah, you got yeah. you have got to check that out. Yeah, all right, it's bucket so list. Fun. Oh, yeah, uh, or we just all take a field trip right now. Let's just all go right now. All right, let's do it. Next question This is from Avery. If you could come up with a new Pokemon type, what would it be? Oh, a new Pokemon type, I would say a werewolf type or a zombie type. A tornado type. Oh, An that's extreme, cool. extreme weather type. You guys are Ooh, that's so much cool. better than me. I'm more like the new Pokemon type would be the help me clean my apartment type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it wouldn't type. just be Mr. Mime. There you go. Mime. <laughs> a whole, a whole, Mr. A whole. Mr. Mime is so Just odd. everybody. Never <laughs> a Snow White and the Seven Dwarves type. Yeah, the house, well, the house is clean. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I didn't mean to mix yeah. properties. Uh, it's fine. It's the it taxes it happens. Of you all had very fast answers on that one, so I feel like you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're going to ask about it. Sure. It's like... growing. I mean, you know, there's so many possibilities. It's one of the most creative things that ever came came down from someone's brain. Do you think there is room for another type? I mean, because we do have a lot of types right now. Do you think introducing a new type? But <laughs> like, unless it's going to be some kind of um, like legendary or like have extra superpowers, we are, we, we do have kind of, you got earth, wind, and fire and water all covered and rock and ghosts. Grass. So, Grass. yeah. Psychic. So, I mean, what would they do? What could like like because now you've got also the ones flipping their properties depending quartz. on what region they're in. Mm -hmm. Quartz type, quartz yeah, type, <laughs> gem type, gem type, gem type Pokemon. They flip houses. They renovate and flip houses. They're really gem type. <laughs> gem type would be fun actually, because then they could go by zodiac signs and stuff. Yes, Ooh, so right? you might be onto something there with that. Yeah. What you didn't like my extreme weather Pokemon? You don't think I'm onto something with that? that. You, you know, well, it, it was type. it was good. It might need a little work. Devil. I just, I just, I just, you got tornado Pokemon, you got a uh, hurricane Pokemon, you got tsunami Pokemon, you got uh, underwater volcano Pokemon. See, once again, I don't think parents should let their children play with these <laughs> particular Pokemon. It's like <laughs> a cataclysmic Pokemon. Cataclysmic Pokemon. Pokemon. Okay. I mean, we, do have, of that we do have some weather Pokemon right now, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I'm just, you know, okay, no, well. No. Oh. I, I try. I try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's jump into the next one here. Yeah. Uh, this is from James. If you were a gym leader, which type would you specialize in? Extreme weather Pokemon. 
Now that's what I they call a callback. <laughs> it was very quick, very extreme. Oh, I don't know. Maybe fairy type, just for fun. Yeah. That's fun. I go psychic type. I'd be a fire type too. Yeah. Yeah. And now, what would be what would be your main go to Pokemon of each of those types? Uh, Charizard. I would. St I'm still getting. I'm. I'm oh. old school. I'll just go straight to Charizard <laughs> and my so, Litten. And this is still be on a fairy type. Yeah. Help me out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm terrible at that. Eevees are fierce. <sighs> um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I played more bird Pokemon than any other too species. Much. That's though. true. That's true. Um, oh, Metacham. That was a that was a psychic type Pokemon that I played on the show. So okay. I'm gonna go with Metacham because I know it the best. All right. So going with Metacham there. All right. Friend. Chimchar. Next up, uh, we got Rosalind. How did you get your first voice <laughs> acting roles? This was my first voice acting role. I got it through a manager. I auditioned. Well, I studied acting. It's not. It didn't happen by accident. Right. I studied yeah. acting. Studied improv. Um, I hunted for representation all over New York, and uh, this manager sent me the on the audition. And there was a callback process, and I, I, they picked me. Uh, it's very cool. That's so <laughs> awesome. That's unbelievable. Yeah. First role. It was my first role. Incredible first role. Yeah. Um, my first role was. This is the funny thing. Someone can tell me, <laughs> Rena or Reina in Ultraman Tiga. The reason why I say Rena mm -hmm. or Reina is that it was Rena for like six episodes and then we had to go back in and change it to reina or vice versa and i can never remember which one oh, um but she was a one of the leads and she was like the ingenue type the sort of i i would call her like more of like a nurse joy type she she was the one who had she she was grounded and she was like the ingenue i guess of the piece she wasn't like megan hollingshead was the like tough chick in it and she was so oh. freaking good watching it I had to do a cameo like years later that I had to watch the episodes to figure out how to say my name. Um, <laughs> and I was like, recalled it. And I thought when I was doing it, that it was kind of like, no offense, like mediocre. Like we towed the line. We didn't go far enough or we didn't mm -hmm. go. We, I felt we didn't go far enough in either direction. But mm -hmm. upon watching it back, I was like, oh, my God, yes. We hit it right straight on where it needed to be. And Megan's performance was part of that for me. But no. yeah, Lisa. Um, my first role was uh, Deedlet in Lotus War. Um, I had come in, it was the first time I'd ever auditioned for an animation. I was still in school. Uh, and I had, I always tell the story of how my brother stole my car. <laughs> I love this story. <laughs> my, one so of my much. brothers stole my car. Uh, I was home from school. I had mono. My car had mono, so it didn't go very far. But my brother wanted to take my car. So he's like, Can I borrow your car? And I was like, No, don't touch my car. But at the time, we kept our keys downstairs. He took my car. And because it had mono, it died. Okay. Because the battery didn't work. Oh my God. And so he calls, and I'm like, Where's my car? And he's, he's like, I don't know. It's at George's house. So he hangs up. I don't know who George is. So the next person who called was a friend of mine, um, Rob Taylor, who I still know to this day. And he's like, and I'm like, do you know who George is? He's like, yeah, sure. I get into the car with him, wind up talking, wind up talking about all this stuff. And he turns to me at one point and he's like, hey, do you know anybody who um, might want to audition for this anime stuff? That we're George doing? or Rob said this. So sorry. Uh, Rob did. Okay. And he's like, this anime stuff. He was working at a place called Central Park Media at the time. And um, I was studying theater. I was doing musical theater. I was doing a whole bunch of different stuff. And I was like, well, you know, there's me. And um, mm -hmm. I went in for, that was the first audition that I went to in New York City. It was a little while ago. <laughs> and, uh, and I wound up booking um, two of the roles that were in the show. But they mm -hmm. didn't know who I was. So they put me in the role of Deed Lit. So it was one of the mains in that show. And then from there, most of the work that I booked were people coming into my sessions because I wasn't really sure how to navigate the whole thing. Um, and were people coming into my sessions and asking me to work on other projects. So that's how I started. But I had I was classically trained. I was studying theater. I was doing musical theater. And that was most of what my background was. And I kept working from there. 
And that's my story. It started with theft. I love that story. It started with uh, with, uh, with auto favorite. theft. It's my favorite beginning oh. Theo story ever. <laughs> no one can okay. top that one. Sorry. My origin story. And my other brother became a police officer. So those are those are the things. Wow. So if there was not theft involved, you might not be sitting here right now. Well, that's very true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, crime, crime uh, between crime siblings pays. is not, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't pay, it, it paid no one. It paid no one. <laughs> but uh, even, even bad situations can lead to opportunity. See how I turn that around? Turn it around. Put a positive good. spin on it. They're, they're, Kids, you can come back into the room now. The day. Mm -hmm. Even bad experiences can lead to positive. Don't, and don't steal your sibling's car. It will just don't lead to rage. It won't lead to a career. It will lead to rage. <laughs> Uh, we got uh, just a few more minutes left here, so we'll try to get through a couple more questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Next up, this is from Sam. If you could have any Pokemon in real life, which one would it be? Oh, gosh. Snorlax. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you put it, though? <laughs> Where would you put oh, it? It's in the Pokeball. In the Pokeball. So. Snorlax is free. Snorlax goes wherever Snorlax That's true. goes. Sure. Free Snorlax. Free Snorlax. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. This is like a mood question, isn't it? Like, what mood are you in right now? It's a good point. Um, get an Eevee. Get an Eevee, and your kids love Eevee. Yeah. E Eevee, maybe, maybe Sobble, just because I could comfort Sobble. Oh. I don't know. I'm good at comforting people, so I don't mm -hmm. know. And Sobble could maybe make me invisible sometimes with him, with mm -hmm. it, I should say. Mm -hmm. And that could be fun. To be invisible sometimes. Yeah. Good points. See, I, I, I would always say like, I would say Litten, but I would be scared that it would light my home on fire. Uh, <laughs> so because I think about things very practically, mm -hmm. uh, and also when it grew up, it would it's like a thunder cat in your house. It's like huge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I always, I always say my go-to is Charizard, just because I want to do what Kiawe did in the Alola region and ride it into work every day. Like, that would be that would be great. Oh, that's a good thought. We should pick that's a flying awesome. Pokemon so we can. Make yeah, it flying type. You could get. I could just go visit. Go visit home a lot easier. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Right. Has to fly. Yeah. Yeah. Which Tapu did you voice again? Tapu V. Which one? Oh, Tapu Fini. Fini. I was gonna say Vini. Tapu Vini. Tapu Vini. Is it Tapu Tapu the one? <laughs> That's fine. Nobody said Psyduck. It's okay. Oh, Psyduck my is awesome. That's for you. That's for you. That's for you. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay. Why don't you answer any questions? Well, it's not. No, we should be all... asking you questions. What, what are you. we doing here? Nobody said Mr. Mime. I thought for sure somebody was going to say Mr. Mime. You know, with the cleaning and all that stuff. And... I, this, <laughs> yeah, and you know. <laughs> It's a pantomime. I need someone to talk to. And eventually I'd be like, Mr. Mime, why? Why? Well, I guess the mime, mime, mime would work. <laughs> All right, let's go into the next one. <laughs> this is from <laughs> Boris the Animal. What other animated series would you like to see have a crossover with Pokemon? Ooh. Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. The show. Yeah, but like <laughs> I, I would love that would be so cool or like the teen titans like i would love them to show up and yeah. just be <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> run around with their power and be like we have pokemon to do that <laughs> we, we know. Wait, what our real monsters Ooh. Mm. i mean it would That's be really back. cool to have Yu-Gi-Oh and pokemon have a crossover just because so many of the cast members are the same and it could be really fun yeah. to just kind of like i don't know cool. right could be fun mm -hmm. to have battles that like if the pokemon rules are mm -hmm. the are the pokemon rules for the pokemon people and then the Yu-Gi-Oh mm -hmm. rules are the rules for the Yu-Gi-Oh people it could lead to a lot of hilarity i yeah. think with the cards <laughs> but how cute would it be if we did rugrats and pokemon <gasps> and the rugrats mm. were oh. that would be cute that would be oh, adorable nipples. Wait, yeah. oh, 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 Scooby Doo. Yeah. Oh my that's god, that's amazing. Well, obviously, that's something I would want to see. <laughs> I would love to. Yeah, that's a show. Obviously. obviously, obviously. Oh my god, that's amazing. Um, all right, uh, next one. This is from Stevie B. 
if uh, if you were to be a contestant on a game show, past or present, what would you like to be on? Wheel of Fortune. I don't know. I don't know. I get very nervous. I don't like being timed. <clears throat> so anything that didn't involve time, which is nothing, right? Nothing. No. You, I mean, the shows are half hours. So. Right? Perfect. But are there things, everything's timed, everything's right? Everything's timed. Yeah. Sorry. I want to the timed world. Yeah. Yes to it. But I want to be what was the show? Was that uh not not match game? Match game was the other it's like the old show where there was like they they looked like the Brady Bunch boxes and people just oh, like Hollywood squares. Yeah, Hollywood Squares. Yeah. That's what I want to be in. What was the one where they guess people's identity and you have to pretend to be that person? I did the um reenactment for it for the celebration of this of it. I've got to be Phyllis Newman. Oh my god. What well, that was a cool that was that's a throwback, but they brought it back. They brought it back. It's it's back on. My, I don't know the name of it. I don't know the name. No, the no. that the, one I like. The the other one that I would want to be on was Double Dare. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh, I'd want to be on the show with the crack. Oh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. I think I'm too old for it now. I think they only take kids. But if no, there's, they, an, there's an there's adult an adult version now. I'm going on that show. Yeah. I'm yes. on Wheel of Fortune. I tweeted at Wheel of Fortune because I'm playing Wordle. I tweeted at Wheel of Fortune and they liked it. Ooh, okay, so we what might be they? onto something here. Mm -hmm. I'm basically on Wheel of Fortune. You're yeah. basically already. Yeah. And then, yeah, I was my mom. I think they should do like a voice actor edition. I, I mean, Wheel of Fortune would be fortune. fun because like it's not super hard, right? Super hard. <laughs> But it's also time too. So <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. negative two thousand dollars. <laughs> walk away owing them money. <laughs> I think we all just want to do the Pokemon spelling bee for the rest of our lives. Yeah, that was so true. stressful preparing for that. Oh my god, yeah. Sarah and Lisa and I studied our butts off. I mean, I studied like crazy. I studied. My kids are like, Mom, calm down. I'm like, I gotta get it right. I was just like, I can't get out in the first round. That was my thing. I was like, yeah. no. I was like, I can't get out of there at all. I have to, like, I've been on the show for, you've been on the show for how long? Like, mm -hmm. sure I, 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 I still, I still shake my fist because it was, I, I didn't know how a certain thing was pronounced. And so I couldn't, and it was like, yeah. after I misspelled it, I was like, well, no, when it was said, I had never heard it said out loud because I only read it and it wasn't like no one, uh -huh. no one voiced it. It was the original Japanese voice. And afterwards it was like, and I forget which one it was, but after they said it, I was like, oh, I just saw that one in last week's episode. I know how to spell that. And then I hung my head in shame. Oh, no shame, no shame. Is there going to be another one? Oh, I know. We got to do it. We got to do it again. Yeah. yeah, we should. We should. I don't know Next. if I have the time to study like that again. Huh? I said, I don't know that I have the time to study like that again. Oh, don't study. You're fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just go into it. Just wing it. Just go right just into it. it. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll, we'll do another one. We'll, we'll build on the knowledge and we'll remember. That's what yeah, I'm sure you remember. I was going to say a game show that I really loved that I always wanted to be mm -hmm. part of was Supermarket Sweep. Oh, oh my good. gosh, yes, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, that was fun. I just wanted to run through the aisles and just grab stuff off just the shelf. That yeah. Be fun. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, one more question, and then we got to head out here. Okay. Uh, this is from Harry. Have you ever played the Pokemon video games? If so, which is your favorite? Pokemon Go. I mean, that's the only one I ever played for like 10 <laughs> minutes with Lisa Ortiz and mm -hmm. and we caught a Doduo together. We did. Yeah, it, was it was exciting. It's amazing. But I don't I don't play video games. I know that's weird. I've voiced an over like 50 of them, but I don't play video games. I don't really play video I only want to die once. I, <laughs> I I haven't played the latest, but I did play Snap and I played uh Let's Go Eevee. Yeah. And yeah. Um, oh, how was that? It was fun. It was a lot it's of fun. fun. I, I just I I and I was playing Pokemon Go to the point, but then it's like I after a while I'm like, oh I'm catching things and then I'm going to work and telling other people to catch them and then I'm like, I should probably take a break. <laughs> so, no. them, so, really. Yeah. So I now know. I now I stay on my on my island. Um, yes. <laughs> I played with my son for a little bit too. He was into it for a little while and that was fun. I caught a magic carp at the US Open. Oh, that's cool. It was that's on cool. the court. It was what? <laughs> that is cool. You did a TikTok of that, didn't you? I did, yeah. Yeah, I remember Once that. Almost brag when something like that happens. 
<laughs> it was an achievement. Look why Go is so nice because it's like you can get that quick, you know, like 10 minute fix of a video game and, you know, and, yeah. then, and then put it down. So I, I'm, I'm with you. I like Pokemon Go. I'm so. Turn it on right now. Well, yeah. What's, what's around you right now? <laughs> what's around me right now? We go. Are we really going to find out? Are you turning it on right now? For real? We, uh, if it uh oh. Uh oh. I think we were so close to the end here. So close. And I think. I think we lost. Maybe we lost, we lost there for just a minute. You'll come back though. Oh, there, oh. There she is. oh. 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 I took up the Wi-Fi. I'm, I'm done. Okay, here. there you are. There you are. Okay. Yay. All right. So we'll just pretend no, there's no, another no, magic card. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank I'm you sure all so much. Power. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here today. Um, we, obviously, we everybody watching, and myself included, we all appreciate all the time and hard work you've put into Pokemon and other uh, franchises as well. But you know, Pokemon is near and dear to our hearts, so thank you for all the all the memories. And I know there's going to be plenty, plenty more. So I love you all. Yeah, you well, all are fantastic. So. Hey, it was so nice having you it's, again. It's so no, it's an honor to be yeah, able yeah. to to talk to you. I literally childhood dream. You know, it's, it, I try my best not to freak out, you know, in, in situations <laughs> like this. Everyone, I hope you have a fantastic Sunday and uh, we'll see you all next time.